for those of you who don't know me, um, I am Angela Gencher, and I am a gold premier with Endless Possibilities, and we, um, I know that everybody talks about taxes and how to keep up with taxes, so I reached out to a friend of mine that I was, um, that I knew from my other company, and I said, hey, I need that tax form, but once I got the tax form, it was all pertaining to her company, but I knew that we could tweak it and make it towards, that we could use it for Posh. Um, so I called on some premieres and I said, help, help, help. And Connie jumped up and said, me, me, me. And she is a whiz with Excel. So she made it nice and poshy for all of us to be able to input our information and have all of this information for us at the end of the year. So Connie's going to share her screen and then she's, we're going to walk through the Excel form that we have for everybody to use and be able to keep up with everything. Um, and Connie is a gold premier and she is out in Utah and she has been with Posh for much longer than I have. So I'm gonna let her take over. Okay. Hi, I'm Connie and this is brand new to me so hopefully I know what I'm doing. I am going to try sharing my screen. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> No, nope, um, it's there. Yes. Okay, <laughs> that looked different that time. So, okay, so this is our tax form. So when you first open it, there's going to be, and how do I move this? Okay, there's little tabs down at the bottom, and I don't know how familiar you are with, with Excel. If you are familiar, this is going to be really easy for some of you. If you're not so familiar, it might be a little more difficult. So there's just little tabs down at the bottom, and I don't know if you can see the instruction one, but then it says main, and then party recap, reorders, and mileage. So the instructions, this is the where you will start out and just read the instructions. It just talks about all of the information that you'll need. Um, Honey, hold on a second. I'm a fr I don't know if you're... Um if your screen is actually recording, that scares me. Oh, okay. How do we know that? Um, we don't. So if it doesn't record your screen, we can do another one, maybe if you want to in, in during the day. Okay. Okay. I'm brand new at this. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I don't either. So we're, we're blind leading the blind. Okay. So... This, this note is a very important one to just kind of read, and it has to do with all of these others. So it's, there's others that are in pink on these other tabs. So it just is explaining that those are, have formulas in, and it's just going to fill in the information for you. Um, but then it just talks about each of the different tabs for you. Um, and then on the main sheet is where a lot of the formulas are that we'll talk about. Um, like all of the different expenses um, and all of that. So, do you have anything to add, Angela? No. I don't um, think we need to read through this instructions, or do you want to? Um, just We'll just touch on a couple of them. Like, the, uh, a lot of these things, and, and Connie will show you, like the party recap, um, we'll walk through that. The reorder sheet, we'll walk through that. Mileage sheet. Um, there is a mileage page on there, so you guys can track all of that. Um, will you scroll down just a tad bit? Um, okay, so the main sheet, let's see what else is there, expenses. The main sheet is what you're going to actually print out and bring to your accountant. Um, and you're going to want to do this monthly. Don't follow your leader's lead. Um, do it monthly. Um, I guess you're just gonna you're go you'll go through some of this when we go to those pages, right? Right. Okay. So go ahead. So let's start with the where it says party recap. I'm not going to start with the main because we want to fill in some of these other pages first before we skip to the main. So party recap is what you'll do when you have a host. So. I'm just going to fill it in just so you understand. You have Jane Doe as the 
hostess. You have the date, January 5th, 2015. And then the total money collected. This is all of the invoices added together um, of the money you collected. So the total. Um, and so it was $512.50. Um, the sales tax is what you collected just in the sales tax. And you'll add these all up from the um, order forms that you got. So we'll say that is $45, just as easy. And shipping, uh, let's say that was 16, just easy, okay? If you notice in the pink, I didn't add anything there. I didn't type anything myself. It filled it in for me and it took the the total money collected minus off the sales tax and minus off the shipping, and that's our net sales. And then it totaled it down here at the bottom. And so if we did another party, so we have Susie Hostess, and we have a date there, January 6th, and we filled in that, it would total it all down here at the bottom, giving you a monthly average, a monthly total. What it also does is it gives you a party total, so it, it takes knows that you did two parties, and then it gives you an average of those parties, which I absolutely love. Um, this one, oh, it's, sorry, it's a different worksheet that I have, and I can add it here if you want. Um, I have, a different worksheet very similar to this that I've been using and I just like to know my average per person so I have a column here where it says how many people were at the right party there, Connie, where it says number of orders where oh I knew there was something I'm like <laughs> where is this where is it okay so there is um, so here was there were 10 orders and here there were four orders. So your average order here was 45 and here was 90 is 94. I'm so glad you pointed that out. I'm like, why isn't it there? Um, so that just gives you a really nice idea of what that is and why do we not have a total here? I'm going to I'm I'm, make a note. I'm Yeah, make a note, please. So we can do an average for the month. And then we'll do an average for the year or two. Got it. Because that's something that's really helpful, at least for me, and I think it's helpful for other people too. So when people, when you have a recruit that says, what's your average host, your average party, you don't need to just kind of wing it. You can actually give them real numbers. So um, I know you're muted, but I think you can do a chat, but I don't know where my chat thing is. Does anyone have questions yet? It's a fairly easy. You can unmute yourself, I think, right? Yeah. Yes? Okay, good. So I'm going to delete this so I don't confuse myself. And then the next one is the reorders, and it's very similar. So it just has January. And these are people that just call up and need reorders or I go back and forth and Angela I don't know how you do it I usually do my events as a party um, and my reorders if I have something on hand that it's just a one person that's ordering how do you do it um, like where how would I put it in here yes so like if I'm doing a big event and I have lots of orders oh I would probably just put that in the party recap. That's what I do. So, and I, I mean, if it's just a one or two order, I do it here. If it's a larger order, I do it here. Yes. So, okay. Just wanted to make sure that that's the same as, as you did. And it's exactly the same way your total collected is the actual money in your hand or credit cards that you process. The sales tax, shipping, and then it'll show net sales. Um, we don't have an average total here. Do you need one? I don't do one on my outside orders. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So all of these, oh, I shouldn't have deleted what was in the other ones. So we're going to, 
we're going to make sure and have some numbers here. So, and same with the party recap, I shouldn't have deleted it. Because then I want to show you how these totals are going to transfer over to our January totals. So the totals from those two workshop worksheets together have made up this $439, the 45 and the 16. It brought it all for you. You don't need to worry about that at all, which makes it really, really nice and smooth. And then the mileage, you'll probably need more lines than this if you do a lot of traveling, but just the date, who, who it was, what you did, um, and then the miles. If, if you do this, I, for me, it's really easy. I have just a, a little notebook that I keep in my car. It's actually my calendar, and I just jot it down on there. And then at the end of the month, you can jot it down on here. So it's, it's whatever's easiest for you. Um, and then if you want to combine some, whatever. If you do need to insert some lines, you just need to click it, and you can insert right there. Kind of don't do put it, um, in um, some mileage because that'll transfer over to the yep. other page too. Yep. So January 8th, 2015, we saw Sally and recruit lead. And we drove 12.5 miles. Whoops, 12.5 miles. So it totaled down here but it also transferred down here in our mileage, which is an expense. And that I want to show you, the IRS lets you deduct per miles every single year. It generally is around, like last year it was 56 and a half, this year it's 57 and a half cents per mile. So that, there's already a formula in here for the miles and you just need to fill that little square in every year. Oops, sorry. And so this year, it's 57 and a half. If you haven't done your 2014 ones, you would want to change that to 56 and a half. Next year, if it's changed, went up, you'd want to change that again. And then that would change this total also. Good? Yeah, Aubrey, um, she has a question about where it's going to be available. And... I'm going to put it on our team page, and then I will also put it in the new consultant docu uh, folder, and then I will also send it in a welcome email. Um, Connie, you tell where you're going to put yours. I will put it on our Facebook page. I don't have a new consultant folder or anything like that, so I should find out from you all of these tricks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not as organized as Angela. Well, they don't pay attention to it anyway, so don't. That's why she has an oodle huge team, and I don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions on that? So that's really on those three tabs. Now on here, the pink areas are what is are going to be filled in, but then we have some other areas that are in blue that you'll need to fill in yourself. So earnings on commission. Um, this is basically what you'll get on your commission sheet. So this is after the fact, like on the 10th of the month, you would be filling this in. Um, and you just get this straight from your virtual office on, on the 10th day of the month. So whatever it is, 1250. And then your downloading bonus, if you're a pink plus one or above, and you get paid on your downline, you would fill in that. And you, you also get that on your virtual office. So I guess that's kind of a lot of commission. I don't know. Maybe it's Darlene's commission. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I guess it could be anyone's. But then we'll do twelve fifty here. And then a premier pool, if you get this, you would fill that in. So you generally find out what that is after the 10th. But 
sometimes it's a big one. So we're going to say it's 8,500. <laughs> and then miscellaneous income, I put this there. More than likely, you're not going to have any, but it's there just in case you do have any. Can you think of reasons you would have any, Angela? No. Me either. But I wanted to put it there just in case. So, so there's your total income for, for the month. And it's, it's really sh taken straight off of your virtual office for these two. And then the premier pool, you would actually get a check. And Andrew tells you what that amount is before you get the check anyway. So then down on expenses, inventory purchase. This, for me, the way I get this is I just, I keep a copy of all of my, um, the order forms, the invoices that I get from Perfectly Posh. I just keep a copy of them. And right now we get those stupid pick sheets, which I hate. And so I go to my virtual office and I print every single page of orders that come in um, of what I place. And I add that up and that's where I get my inventory purchase. So Connie, I don't know what you do. Could you possibly add another sheet for inventory? So like every month when you place an order, they can go in and just put, like, sure. that, that night, they could put in their inventory? Yes. So kind of like how I have basically the mileage just orders for January and then have it pull and put fill in here. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Make awesome. it out for me. Make yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Because I'll forget. So, but is that how you get your inventory purchased? Um, well, last year was a little hokey, so uh, we won't discuss it. Okay. I, I just pulled it from what I paid to Posh for inventory, okay. but that's not correct because it's not what I purchased because it wasn't including those people with credit cards. Okay. And it used to be easier because we used to have a different virtual office way to get it so and let me add when you're doing your inventory purchase you want to include even those people that paid with a credit card and you're using their credit card to yeah. pay for that order all of the inventory goes here yes so if you have a party and you have 10 people putting your credit their credit cards in it doesn't matter you're going to take the party base you're going to take the sales tax the shipping and handling and put that in there yeah, this is basically everything you are buying from the company. Per, uh, in, uh, in, not inventory, um, product-wise. You're buying anything from the company product-wise. Okay, so, so whether, Rebecca has a question about the miscellaneous income. She says, for on-hand items you sold out of your stock. No, that would be under reorders you would put that down under reorders, under total collected. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So that's where that would, where, where you would get that. And then that would go into your, um, that would go into your income, Rebecca. Yes. It'll automatically go in there. Okay. Um, so then the inventory purchase, again, I, do the sales tax and the shipping. The shipping and handling is what you paid to Perfectly Posh to have it delivered to your home, or if you had it shipped to a hostess, what you paid to have it shipped to the hostess. So this is really just getting it straight off of your, let me find one. Sorry, but it's just really getting it straight off of your, well, these are pick tickets, so that doesn't work. <laughs> Off of your little invoices that you print, if you can see those. But I just, I printed them and just entered those. So, it used to be easier when they were not pick tickets. I'll tell you that much. And hopefully it will change back. Anything you buy from the portal are expenses and that you can deduct. Um, so they would go right here, the portal items, the sales tax, and the shipping. And this is everything that you buy from them. Can, so, Connie, can you put yeah. in inventory of, say, 1500 Oh, yes. Sorry. 
and sales tax, I don't know, 100. And shipping on that would be free. So <laughs> that would be free shipping. Yay. <laughs> well, I guess it wouldn't be one. That wouldn't be one order. But let's it just say. Be. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say it was for, for ease there. So any, you got that? Is that yep. good? Angela? Okay. And then, so like I was saying, the portal items, I had one girl that she said, no, it's just catalogs and it's just certain things you can't do. You can't do um, shirts and you can't do bags. I said, yes, you can. That's advertising. Every single thing that you buy from the portal is deductible. So keep track of that. So, okay, wait, wait, hold up. Okay. So now I see something. So with the portal items, if we put that in there, then you have to make sure that you don't put it into the advertising and promotion. So I guess you, you could Correct. do it in either spot. You could either do it in advertising or in portal. For me, it is so much easier to just do all of it here and just have it be supplies. Okay. For me. But if you want to break it out, you can do that, but you have to go through every single invoice then. Got it. So Got it. the portal items, it's just so much easier to just enter all there. So awesome. If you want to do it that way, you could. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like your way better. And let's see. I don't know what tax would be on that. And shipping would be $5. Good? Good. Okay, this is where you are going to want to keep track of all of your expenses. The easiest way to do this is just, I have little envelopes that have these same categories on it um, that I just stick my receipts in. And then you take them out and just enter them in. Um, so the accounting accounting and professional fees that's like your accountant that's if you have to talk to an attorney um what else could be in there uh, i think that would be it i'm sure there's others but those are the main ones <laughs> okay hold if, on we got a question okay, okay yep. so the inventory basically everything that was purchased by myself parties reorders etc yeah. yeah it doesn't matter who paid for it if, if you went into the system and purchased it from Posh with either your money or Susie's money, it's still inventory purchased. It's still inventory purchased. Yes. And that is cost of goods sold. We should probably have explained that because that is the cost to you of goods that you are selling or have sold already. And that's why it includes the tax and the shipping. And you've made that purchase immediately when you make that purchase, it's an expense. Even if it's for things that you are having on hand for cash and carry, you've made that expense right then. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, the, but these expenses here are where you'll really want to keep track. Some people forget about them. Um, advertising and promotions. Um, if you buy anything that you're not getting from the portal is where you'd put these here. So any t-shirts or pens that are personalized, any um, advertising that you do. This is also, and I can put this in parentheses if I need to, where Angela and I both put our event fees. Um, so if you do events or boutiques or anything and you pay for them, this is where we both put our amounts there. Credit card processing fees. This is if you use Square or PayPal or what are some of the other ones? ProPay. Any of those where you're charged an actual fee when you process the credit card, that's where you would put those in. Donations, any kind of donations that you make would go there. That includes like charitable donations also. Dues, subscriptions, um, if you have, do you put your subscription for like Zoom in here or do you not do that? Huh, yeah, that's where I'm going to put that. Or would that be under advertising? No, I would put it under subscriptions. That's, yeah, okay. that's where that would go. Okay. Or like any, like the DSWA, I'm a part of that. So I would yeah. put that there. 
any kind of things like that would go there. Um, education and training, leadership would go in here, your leadership fee, um, your training, your uncon costs, I would put here. What do you do? Yes, that's where I would put it. Okay. That's where I put it also. Um, day away. Any, the day aways, anything like that. If you go to any kind of training, I know um, Shalene, she just took a, an Excel course. If, if she had to pay for it, which I'm sure she did, that would go under here too. So any kind of training that you pay out of pocket would go in there. Entertainment, um, yeah. Lori's asking, can we just use our total PV for each month on that cost of goods sold line? I would say I'd have no, to think because I don't that doesn't think include, so. Yeah, that doesn't include like the hostess stuff and I don't think you could. Well, cost of goods sold, doesn't that include tax and shipping too? Well, she I think she means for the inventory purchase. Yeah, but, that wouldn't make it wouldn't it wouldn't add up. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it would. So after every time you place an order, just take a screenshot of your base, party base, your sales tax and your shipping, and then come on over here and put it in there. She's gonna make that other sheet. So you'll just put that in there every time you do a party, anytime you submit an order, you wanna come into the Excel document and go under inventory and put down those three things. The base, yeah. the sales tax, and the shipping, and that will have all of that in there for you. Yes, and I'll do, I'll do a sheet, which should be fairly easy for you to to know what to enter. Yeah, you'll have to go back to all your other orders before um, you started using this and put them in. And it shouldn't take too long. No. And I mean, if, if you really wanted to not do the months and you wanted to enter all of them, enter for April, you could. But I would recommend breaking them out for the months. It, it, it's going to be easier for you. And it's not like it's September and you have to go through all of them. Right. Yeah. Okay. So where were we? Education, training, entertainment. This is, um, boy. <laughs> this could be a lot of things. <laughs> this could be. To the liquor store, during leadership. Yes. Uh, Lots of things. Um, you got tours while you're there at leadership. Yeah. Um, if you if you take a recruit lead to a movie, it can go here. Um, what else? I mean, there's lots of different things. Just kind of think about if you're out of town and you're going entertainment. If you're out of town for business, it could go here. And like like Angela was saying. If it's for a recruit lead, if it's for a team member, if you take your team member on a, I don't know, Crew. to go get pedicures, because that was an incentive, um, that, that's where you would put it. So you can put lots of stuff in there. And this will be, you'll put the dollar for dollar in here and let your accountant know that it's dollar for dollar because then only 50% is deductible. But put the dollar per dollar there, okay? Insurance, this would be any kind of insurance you pay, liability insurance. Um, I don't pay health insurance, but I don't know if we need a separate one for health insurance, do you? Um. I don't know the whole Obama laws or anything. I used to. That's my my whole degree is human resources. So I used to know them back and forth. But I've been out of that for a little while. <laughs> Which, could that be? Could that be your house insurance too? Um, that's down here. Oh, okay. You got all that down there. Okay. Um, yes. Well, then, yeah, I would probably do health insurance. 
Okay, I that's what I kind of thought it would be also, um, but I I know it's like if you have to pay an insurance fee for like some events, you have to do a liability right. insurance, those kind of things, that would for sure go in here. But I think the health insurance would go in here also. And if I need to break those out, I could. Okay. But I don't know if I need to or not. Maybe just put don't know. parentheses, liability, Loss. health. Okay. 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 Interest. This is any interest that you paid on business loans or business credit cards, um, those kind of interests. And this was something I didn't know. So Angela taught me. <laughs> Licenses and permits. Anything that you need for doing business in your in your city or state. What other licenses would you need? Yeah, that's all I could think of. Okay, Th those are the main ones. I mean, every once in a while you might need one. I know I did one for the state fair and I had to have a stupid permit, but it was dumb. So <laughs> anyway, the same thing with entertainment is kind of how meals is. So save all your receipts that you go. Um, if it's a business-related meal, save your receipts um, and it will be dollar for dollar that you put in here, but only 50% is deductible. But put the full amount in here. And that's every single meal that you're out of town on business with. It's for meetings, it's for recruits, it's for um, what else? I mean, it's really everything. <laughs> this is a good one. So it adds up. Miscellaneous samples. What did we decide was this? Just every sample that's not purchased from the portal and not in supplies, right? So that would be like Lacons that you purchased outside of that? I put those in supplies, but I guess we could put them in samples. I just put mine in supplies. Or you can just get rid of miscellaneous samples. Okay, I can do that. Write a note. Got it. I think I was, I think I asked you about that and you said to get rid of it and I didn't. That's okay. Yeah, now I remember. <laughs> Office supplies, I put lots and lots and lots of stuff in here. Basically, I have lots and lots of stuff in here. Um, anything I buy that doesn't really fit in a whole lot of other categories that goes in here. This is where I put my Lacons, this is where I put any of the supplies that I make my samples with that I don't buy from the portal. Um, I mean, pens that aren't personalized. Um, I, I, I think this is probably one of my biggest things. Probably. Yeah, yeah I think so. Save receipts for everything. Um, other bank fees, if you're charged fees to bank, if you buy bought checks, if you um, a bounce were charged, check. Uh, yeah, what was that? A bounce check? Bounce check fees, exactly. That's what I was just going to say. That would go in there. So any fees that you're charged to do banking um, that aren't the credit card fees. Other supplies, really, I mainly put it in office supplies, but there's this other supplies if it just really doesn't fit in anything else, put it there. Um, Postage and shipping, this is to mail things to your downline, to mail things to customers, to mail things back to Posh. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I mail things a lot to my downline and mail things a lot to my clients. So that's what I have there. Okay, and well, if you, we, got a, yeah. we got a question from Aubrey. Okay. Um, she wants to know if you could add a supply sheet um, on there so that it just transfer over. Um, I mean, in my thoughts is just add up your receipts that you have that month and throw it in that. Yeah, that would be the easiest, but I guess I could do a sheet, just, just like a column and have it, have it just be the, ex I think I understand what she means. But then you would have to do that for every every expense. So just keep your receipts and then yeah. add them up at the end of the month. Yeah. 
just and it you can just add them really quick on a on a calculator. You, you don't need to have them entered. Mm -mm. So, but just keep those receipts. Right, keep them. Yeah, what I I usually do is once I enter them, I transfer them from my one envelope, transfer them to a different envelope, and put them away. And I usually don't have to ever see those again. So, um, telephone. This would. If you have your own, um, if you have a cell phone, if you have a home telephone, any of those, go ahead and put it down. Um, you can talk to your accountant. Some of them say you can only deduct a portion. Some say do with the whole thing. I'll let your accountant decide what you want to do. Um, I'm not a tax accountant, and I cannot say that I'm giving you tax advice. So we're just helping you out. Travel and lodging, I just want to protect myself. Right. <laughs> I don't want anyone audited and then they can say, Connie told me, <laughs> Angela told me. Right. Um, travel and lodging, this is any time you go out of state um, or travel anywhere for your business. Um, if you have to cross a toll bridge and pay, if you have to get a taxi and get receipts, um, Taxi cabs have receipts. They usually give it to you blank and you get to fill in your own amount, but get those. Um, this is also hotels. This is, um, what else? Car rentals. Car rentals, yeah. All of that would go in Air here. Airplane. Airplane, yes. So, yeah, the flights to Uncon, all of that. Yep. Bus, if you take a bus to Uncon, that would go there. All of those. Now, if you were to use your points for travel... Just remember, it's 200 points per dollar, so break that up. So if, you're, if your um, flight was like 300 points, then how did I just do that? 300 divided by 200. Three, 300,000, is that what you mean? No, flights are, no, flights are 178,000. Okay, 178,000, and then you would divide that by 200 and then times that by... No. One. No, times it by... Two, no, nine. just divide it. Just do 178,000 1, divided by 200. Yeah, so that's 89. Okay, so put 89 in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you would do 89. And what I do is I printed mine out, my, like because I bought a computer with my points, and I printed my little invoice out, and I wrote it on there just so I had it in my, and then I put it in my supplies. So that's what I did, just so I wouldn't forget, because if I do it in May, and then I am doing my taxes in April, I'll forget. So, yeah, do it then. Um, wages paid, this is if you have an assistant, if you pay your child, um, you can, you can, there's, there's ways you can pay your child um, a wage, so talk to an accountant or read online. Um, sometimes it's better to do that as a, an allowance, <laughs> but have them do some work for you, um, and then you can actually deduct it, so there's ways to do that. But if you do have an assistant, this is where you would want to put it. And as, as you start getting bigger and bigger, um, you will have some wages paid. So make sure and put that down. Connie, go ahead and put a whole bunch of numbers in that column. Okay. That's, that's expensive training. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not really paying attention. So Yeah, don't mind the numbers. that good? Yeah. Does that give you an idea? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so that just, uh, the miscellaneous, let's put that in too. Okay. So that just totals down here all of your expenses. So if you notice here, cost of goods sold is an A because this total here is that total. And then B is all the portal totals. And then all of these expenses here, your other expenses, is C. And so that's totaled there. And then A, B, and C together are 
all of your expenses, including your cost of goods sold, your expenses, and your portal expenses. That's what all of that is. Good? Good. Okay. And then your net income is? Um, is right? Bonnie, yeah. um, Lori asked if on the front page with the directions we can do yeah. points, like the point value. So I'm writing a. Write that down. Yeah. Yes. That's a good, that's a good one to have on there because yeah, people will forget and it's a good one to have. Okay. So your net income is what your net income would be for that month. So what that is, is it's all of your income that you had coming in from Posh minus all of your expenses. And that is what you were left over. So kind of what you're taxed on. Does that make sense? There are some other expenses that some people may need. Um, if you have, and if you are doing a home business, you can write off portions of your home mortgage or your rent based on square footage of your house. So it's good to kind of keep those the numbers for each month, how much you pay in more your mortgage, your mortgage interest, um, your your mortgage insurance if it's not included in your payment. So a lot of times it's included in your escrow amount, um, which is also included in your mortgage. If that's the case, don't include it there. Um, the same with your property taxes is if it's, if it's automatically paid out of your escrow, don't include it on these two. And it's, it, it explains that on the instructions. Um, but then your... Um, property service, like if you have a HOA fee, those kind of things. And then your utilities, all of your utilities you want to include there um, because a portion, if, if you have like a square footage house of 8,000 and you have 4,000 of it strictly for your business, and these are just numbers I'm pulling out of my head, that's a huge house. <laughs> but um, you could do 50% of these for your home office. So, and so it's good to keep those. Um, the large business equipment, um, this, like if you buy a copier, um, something that's a really higher dollar amount, there's even a way you can do a vehicle, um, talk to an accountant whether or not he wants you to depreciate something or just include it in your supplies. Um, like my computer, it wasn't worth it. it. I mean, it's you just put it in your in your supplies. But if it's a bigger one, I know there's a dollar amount. Do you know what that dollar amount is that they usually use as a guideline? I don't either. Uh -uh. So, yeah. Pat, Pat wants to know: um, Can she write off her lawn service? Her lawn service. That's a good question. I don't know. But yeah, that's a good question for your account. Um, but I think if you do your business, like if you depre if you write off a portion of your home for your business, yes, you can. But talk to your accountant. Yeah, I would say talk to your accountant. And if that's the case, I really need to hire a lawn boy. <laughs> but I would say, especially if you live in a place where it's required to have upkeep in a certain, you know, I mean, I think we all do, but yeah. Okay, um, the beginning inventory and the ending inventory, of course, you probably didn't do inventory on January 1st because you're just now getting this. Um, I would say kind of maybe estimate what you had on hand um, and then December 31st, um, I try to actually kind of do a physical inventory. I have kind of was lax this year, but other years I've actually done physical inventory of what I have. What about you, Angela? Yeah, I, I do. Do I know where it's at? No. So this is going to be awesome for me because I'll be able to look on here and know where it's actually at. Um, what about beginning and ending mileage? Is that on the mileage sheet? No, but I can put it there if you want me to. Okay. I got that note. Okay. So that's it. Yep, and it just really transfers all of these year-end totals. It's going to transfer, 
and all of this. And then you really want to print this out or send this to your accountant is what you're going to want to do. So we just email it to our accountant and he has all of the information. So if you print it, it's going to print really small um, or you or on two pages. So just be warned about that. I kind of wanted to touch base with y'all. I got a couple of apps on my phone. One's called mileage and it okay. does my to and from and you identify whether they're personal or business. Okay. And I also have an app called itemize and I can take a picture of my receipt and it'll automatically put all the information on there because of the scan code that's on your receipt. So it'll mm -hmm. say, okay, Home Depot, blah, 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 amount of money, you know, and then you identify a couple other spots, but it's really, it's really a nice app. So, and then does that export to an Excel spreadsheet? It exports, I think to, I have one it exports to a CSV, which I can... Right, and then that can be an Excel spreadsheet. So then you could copy and paste into this. Right. Yeah, that's, that's really slick. I know I used one similar to that for about a month. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> different apps and those two seem to be the ones that work yeah so. I, I really like the mileage one and up until I got my new phone I was really 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 good about using it and then my new phone I just haven't been good at but the but the expense one I really did use it for about a month and then it, I don't know why I quit now the cool thing about this mileage thing is every time you go with your phone and drive it records it so it does it automatically for right. you? You just have to go in and identify if it's a personal. You just what? Write your so personal it's like a GPS. It, it just knows. What's the yeah. name of it? It's got, it's called mileage, M-I-L-E-A-G-E. -E. And it records every time I'm with the, with the vehicle going somewhere. And then I just have to go in after I do whatever I'm doing and go personal or business. Swipe it left or swipe it right. And so do you, do you always have to have your GPS on? I have turned off my cellular. It probably would need to have the cellular data on, but it's okay. always on for me because I use it to call when I'm on the road and things like that. But. So how does it know you're going from point A to point B and how much miles, how many miles it is? Part of the program. From satellite, I guess, maybe? Right. And I've been okay, you have really the first 90 days for free, and now it's $10 a month. $10 a month? Yep. Thanks for sharing, Pat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesomeness. No, no you should have shared it working. free. <laughs> well, it's free for 90 days, but after oh. that. But, Angela, don't you need expenses? <laughs> don't you need deductions? No, I need to make money. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? No? Will yeah. this be helpful? Yeah. How many of you guys are going to use it? That many of you. <laughs> I told you uh, that Excel makes it clear as mud. So I understand the thought behind it, but unless I have something I can move over into Excel. <laughs> I tried making it pretty easy. Is it not easy? Well, it, it, it's easy, but I don't know how to make the formula. You don't. you don't need to. You don't need to do any formulas. The formulas are there for you. You just need to enter numbers. So I can take this off of wherever you're going to put it, and it should go into Excel, and all I got to do is fill it in. Yes. Okay. And if you don't have Excel, you can use Google Docs, and it'll do the same. I have Excel, but I'm still trying to understand Excel. Excel and I are having arguments right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got, I know I was going to get with you, Angela, but I'm going to have some guy from church that understands it in and out, and he's going to give me a little class. <laughs> Very cool. Good. That'll help. And and if you don't have somebody from church to give you a class, YouTube is really good, too. Is it? Yes. Yeah. All right. Pat, you know what YouTube is, right? Yes, I do. 
I can't figure out how to transfer something I do on the YouTube, but I, I know what YouTube is. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have my granddaughter here. She's 14. How oh, funny. She knows how to transfer. <laughs> hey. Well, right. I will make sure, Angela, that I make whatever changes that you send me to make. Okay. And then I will make those, and then I will send you the final one, and then you can do what you need to do for your team. Okay. And if this doesn't record her screen of the Excel, then we can do another one during the day. Or if you don't want to, then I can just go ahead and redo it. Yeah. But whatever. You so well. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Connie Jo. I love this and I'm so excited for it. So thank you all for getting on the call too. Thank you. All right. We're leaving the meeting. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Do I